Okay, guys, I am back. All right, <clears throat> got my inventory all cleaned up. Got the components. Uh, we will be required for the next uh, phase. One thing I did forget to get, though, as you can see, is a little chrysium bucket that we will need because now we are going to work on snowballs. That's right. We're going to start working on our snowball production. So, like I say, I like to keep it away from the main production. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, just move some of these chests just over here for now, out of the way. I'm going to build a snowball facility over here. So, what we need first is we need to get some autonomous activators. I think that's pretty, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Get a hole there. Put that in there like so. I am going to get secondary energy cell just because I don't want to run. I know, it sounds lazy, but I just don't want to run a cable cleaner over here because these autonomous activators require power. So, so what we're going to do is put the bucket of cryothium right in there. Now, I don't want to apply power to that yet because I don't want to be dealing with a bunch of snowballs um, bouncing around. So, yeah, we're not going to apply power till the last. Cobble, I need to get some cobblestone. Um, I'm just using this just to place uh, the autonomous activators down. Um, so what we'll have is we'll have, let's see, we'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven autonomous activators breaking snowballs. So all they're doing, that's their job break snowballs <laughs> now I'm just placing these down at random I'll uh, use my crescent hammer here to uh, to go ahead and flip them up let's see there there we go there we go oh that one didn't turn there we go there we go get all the oh missed that one there we go it should be two okay now what I'm going to do is just bust these up here. I don't need this anymore. Don't need this cobble. Get rid of that. Set the sun back up. Let it let it shine on us a little bit there. Now what we're going to do um, is I have item conduits right here. Redstone, uh, insulated redstone, and ender. Again, I like ender IO. You can create this however, however you like. Um, completely your call. On which uh, conduit you'd like to use. Um, so let's see. So I'm going to set up my item conduits. Actually, I don't need item conduits on this because I'm using a vacuum hopper. So what we do need, though, is we will need redstone. The redstone conduit on here, like so. And we will need the power conduit. And that's all we're going to need on top of these here. So we'll get this in place like so I'm just holding shift right clicking to place these on top of these just like that now what also we'd like to do is we um, well let's see should I do it that way uh, yeah yeah because we're definitely going to want to switch on these um, simply because we may want to turn the snowballs off you know We'll get so many snowballs that uh, we'll definitely definitely be overflowing them. And if you don't want to have it on and off switch, that's fine. But you better set yourself up a uh, 64K drive in your AE system uh, <laughs> because you will get a lot of snowballs. Um, we don't need redstone on this one. This is just going to run constant. Uh, not a big deal if it does. Um, not going to hurt anything. Because it can only place the snowballs down once. If there's already snow there, then it's not going to uh, make more snowballs, obviously. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to disable these. You don't have to. I, I just like to keep things clean. And for those of you guys wondering why I'm not making this a little bit more compact over here, it's simply because I want you guys to actually see how everything functions. Um, you can make this thing extremely compact. Um, uh, but yeah. Yep, there we go. Now we got our snowballs. Um, all that's in good shape. Now I'm just going to use this just to activate my redstone. Like I say, you can do this however you'd like to do it. 
This is just how I, uh, how I'm going to be doing it. So what I'm going to do is put this down there. If something doesn't connect like with your redstone, just hit it with the wrench. There, it's connected. I'm going to run redstone wire. Actually, I can just put the switch right on that. I don't need redstone wire. So I'm going to put my switch on there. And there, we have redstone signal now. Excellent. Excellent. So now we have no signal going in. So now I feel, I feel comfortable um, putting the power supply down that we're not just going to start producing mass quantities of, yeah, redstone. See, there you go. Places down. Places down your snow. Now we're going to move our snowball barrel, which is linked up to the other barrel over there. Or where did I go with that other snowball? Yeah, right there. <laughs> God, blind. Okay, we're going to take this and we are going to set it. Let's see if I can get up here. We're just going to set it right here for now, right on top. There we go. And then we're going to set our vacuum hopper right in the middle here. I'm actually going to set it right there. And then we're going to set item conduit to it. Coming over here and into our barrel, just like that. Click this, make sure it's insert. Um, you don't need no filters on this, obviously, because it's a barrel, so I'm gonna take that, um, just like so. So then we're gonna right click our vacuum hopper. And see, this, the vacuum hopper always does that. So I just type a bunch of random stuff in the search, gets rid of my NEI for a minute. Come in here and items left click or the top like so and now i got to get under there and wrench that so that it connects hmm hmm can i get in there no i can't so what we're going to have to do is somehow uh hmm so yeah, this is what we're gonna do. Just temporary. I'll break that in a minute. Um, Cause we don't need it producing any. Oh, and it did anyhow. It produced it anyhow. Now that will kill you if you fall in the cryotheum. So don't be fooled. It will. It will take you out. So I don't have a bucket in here anymore, do I? Yes, I do, but there's nothing in it. Good, bust that. Now I'm doing this just so I can get up in to turn that conduit on. Just quick, uh, maybe, not gonna let me. Hmm, why is it doing that, I wonder? I wonder, let's see, we'll bust this. There we go, there we go, right click. Uh, always active like so uh, let me get some get some dirt and another bucket of cry here so we'll get this if I can spell again we'd be in great shape and I don't need this empty bucket we trash that and uh, we need some dirt just one piece of dirt just just one one piece of dirt that's all we need that's all we we'll get there Fill this back in, boom, boom, boom. Put our bucket back in here, Chrysium. And there we go, back to working. Now, uh, one final step, we don't need no more item hoppers, cobblestone, keep that. We'll need a lever, we'll need filters, we don't need dirt. So what we're gonna do now um, is we're gonna fill these other autonomous activators up with uh, shovels. If I can spell again, I would be in great shape, man. So we just need to get a bunch of shovels. We have nine, we have six, we have seven. So we'll just get uh, one, two, three. We got, what we got there? What we got there? Eight, we got nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We'll do two per, because they do take wear. Um, so you just got to keep an eye on that. 
What I like to do sometimes is um, when I have this set up, if I'm really producing a lot, is I'll make uh, Tinker's Construct shovels with some, a cheap material and I'll do nine for each activator. And then just cycle out when they get to a certain breaking point, cycle them out uh, to a workbench. And I can just replace them. I'll have a bunch made and just have them cycle through and I'll just repair them periodically. But once you get enough cryosium that you have your reactors full, this setup is pretty much not gonna be needed anymore. But it's well worth the time if you're making a huge reactor and you have so many buckets. Because this stuff, cryosium does not run like any normal fluid. One bucket takes one block and it will sink down to the bottom block wherever you dump it. Um, so you will need one bucket per every individual block. So if you have a five by five spot, five high by five long spot you need to fill up, you'll need 25 buckets just for that small spot. So imagine that on a huge scale. You're going to need tons of this stuff. So that's why this setup can really really be a lifesaver if someone wants to build a super big super efficient um, big reactor and then we got the rain started uh, we'll turn that off we'll bring the sun back up and there we go we have our snowballs being produced so we can turn this on um, we'll let it start working ah one thing i didn't do we got to turn that back off again is I didn't set these, you got to set it to right click. Um, that way it will break, um, it'll use the shovel essentially. Yeah, and keep it set to round robin, that way it goes through all your tools and your tools will wear evenly. Um, so you're not getting just one broken tool and it stops and you have nine in there. Um, so yeah, just make sure you have it set to round robin. Now we'll turn it on and there we go we've got snowball production and the numbers are cranking up so we'll let that run we'll let that barrel fill up we're good to go on I see how what I said there about some of them like to bounce out that once you can't see um, so what I like to do sometimes is I'll encase this um, with just one path walkway around so I can get through that way I don't have snowballs everywhere in my build or in my constantly gathering inventory you know I explained earlier yeah but uh, so yes, so there is that. That section is complete. So now let's move our barrels out of the way because we're going to start the final stage of this build. So that's all over there. We got all that done. So next, what we need, we don't need our autonomous activators anymore. We're done with those for now. Um, chest will hang on to because I do want to build a buffer for... Um, uh, bah, can't think right now. The niter. I do want to store the niter, which in fact, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put a barrel there. Let's see. We'll go to get a barrel. I want a Java barrel. We'll put that right there. And what I'll do is I'll take this out. Yeah, I don't want to put uh, put my barrel in a barrel. Put that there. It will lock it. We'll set this to push out. And what I'll do now is I'll grab some more cobble, throw in there, just so we can get a good supply of um, niter going. So I'm going to grab just a few stacks here. I got to watch. I've crashed my game three times overfilling uh, my inventory. <laughs> Trying to uh, work on that first one over there to get you guys wherever it went. Where'd it go? I know it's here. There it is. <laughs> Working on that first one for you. So you guys get an idea how it works. So we'll get that going and uh, that'll drain and do all the things. Give us our niter over here. Hopefully we'll start doing some gravel too so we can get that function working. But for now, there we have it. Um, and this is filling in with okay that's doing okay that's filling in my ah my gravel <laughs> but you know what I might do just to fix this a little bit I'm going to change this up um, and I'm just going to run it on the bottom like so here um, right here 
I don't want them connected, so I just right click that with a, uh, my uh, wrench. Run that there. And this, I'm going to just do an insert, um, like so. And I need flint is going to go in the back. Sorry, guys, I, I should have done this earlier. I was thinking I was going to run it another way. Uh, but I think this way is going to be a little bit more, uh, it's just going to be better. Um, because then I can run my redstone connections up over here. Um, yeah, so that, that'll work out. That'll work out better. So I'm going to disable this with none. I'm going to spin around to the back, set this up on pull so that it's pulling in gravel from back here. And this is cooking up. Wow, it's cooking up cobble. Which is not what I want to happen. There, I got some gravel. Um, it's cooked up and threw in there. Oh, never mind. The sand, <laughs> we had mentioned that. The sand is coming uh, from actually cooking up the gravel, which I thought that might be the case. So what we're going to do is just run another line. Ooh, why did it do that to me? Run another, run another conduit to here. Set this to insert put a filter and set this to sand so that that's all that that's pulling extracting and we're going to add sand as well we have filters everywhere else on where it's going like this here is only going to be inserting um, flint and then back here again on the insert side just flint so all the sand will just go into our crafter and I'm going to disable the connections um off of here for the items um i do this sorry guys i i just like it to be clean sorry okay so what we got cobble grinding it up into sand making sandstone and gravel gravel goes back is turned into um, flint the extra sand gets pulled out into here which again is making sandstone boom makes niter excess back in here Boom, for more sandstone. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. All right, now we need a magma crucible, which we're going to put right there. We need a fluid transposer, which we're going to put right there. Now I'm going to go in to the settings and I'm just going to clear all the inputs on these. If you just shift left click, it'll clear them all out and nullify everything um, until we get get it all set on how how we want to run it here so there we go now we can move um, our snowballs over to here right there and then our um, redstone up to here like so and now what we want to do we need to keep make sure we have enough filters here because like I say we will go through some filters we want to run this and that and we want to extract make sure it's always active extract always active and this is going to run over to here now the input i'm going to break this one actually so that we can set our filter on these properly input in the top like so on the magma crucible set this to insert and add a filter and this is going to be redstone which I didn't grab redstone forgetting I'd forget my head if it wasn't attached I'm telling you so we got that so now I'm just going to grab a few stacks I'm gonna put some more in that barrel over there um, so yeah so we'll put redstone in the filter for insert so the only thing this is going to get is redstone now we're going to our settings output on the left we want the fluid to go into the fluid transposer which is orange okay now on the fluid transposer input on the right to receive all the the blue now this part is going to get a little uh not really tricky but it's we got to set okay on the fluid transposer again input blue on the top and the side so you're going to receive the fluids from the right and you're going to receive the snowballs from the top so we can make our blizz powder okay so now insert 
add a filter like so I'm just going to grab a snowball out of oh and I broke it I broke it oh no oh no <laughs> I forgot I was in creative okay let me pause the video um, I'm going to rebuild that barrel and relink them and I'll be right back <laughs> Jeez, can't believe I did that <laughs> right back okay guys here we are I am back after that little uh, mistake <laughs> Uh, I went ahead and upgraded the redstone barrel as well and threw a bunch more in there. Got the barrel back. Um, and that amount in there, 56 stacks, has actually uh, been put in there in like two minutes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that snowball farm over there works pretty well. Uh, if you don't need it to be that fast, all you really need to do is just drop down some of the uh, autonomous activators there and just put blocks around where you don't want snow and you'll be, you'll be good to go on that. So... Okay, back to what we were doing here since uh, I did that. Um, redstone and uh, the snowball barrels are linked to go out, um, set up to always active. Going in the redstone is going into the magma crucible with a filter for insert mode with just redstone so that it liquefies it. There's no power yet to it. The snowballs are going into the fluid transposer with a filter for just redstone. That way, them two machines are not gonna get jammed up uh, with those two items there. And then over here on this side, we have our barrel of niter. Great, excellent, superb. Now, the thing about this part here is where it could get a little tricky um, because we need redstone and snowballs to make the blizz powder, but we also need snowballs and redstone to make the craetium dust. Okay, so that's why I kind of set it up this way. Um, so we have the sides outputting into the two machines to produce the blizz powder. And now we're going to go ahead and run um, some conduits on the backside, like so. And these are going to be exports, so make sure they're always active. Active, um, actually leave this right here, active with signal. These got to stay active with signal because we're going to apply a timer to these. Um, so if we don't have a timer, our crafting bench will just get flooded with snowballs and redstone and none of the other items for the recipe will be able to make their way in there. As you can see, I got some flint in there. Uh, how that got there, I don't know. Probably as I was setting up the filter on this, but that's besides the point, it's fixed. So yeah, leave these so that they are active with a redstone signal. So now we're gonna use our insulated conduit. We're gonna put one here and here, like so. Actually, you know what? Let's do the redstone first. It just, it's just gonna make it easier for us to activate the redstone, to actually have it connect to the block. Because it's gotta connect to the con. I'm sorry, it's gotta connect to the conduit, not the block, I apologize for that. And yeah, okay, so make sure these are set to out. The redstone is on the red channel, which we're not gonna mess with the channels right now. So this is output with redstone signal, okay? And this, we gotta set these up now, okay? So the fluid transposer, the back is this bottom right corner. So this is gonna be export in the back of the magma crucible. This is going to be, we don't really need anything on that because th this is just producing the liquid for this. So just on the fluid transposer, export in the back, okay? And we are going to need to grab a piece of blizz powder this video is getting a little long. I wanna get this finished up here. Um, piece of blizz powder, we'll grab that. That's just gonna be used for our filtering purposes. Put this there, export with redstone signal, and we are gonna filter that so that it only takes out the blizz powder. Okay, we don't wanna take in redstone or anything like that. So now we're gonna run our redstone conduits to there, to there, and now we'll also run our um, item conduits co to connect these units up, like so. And we wanna break this connection in the middle because we don't want that connected because if not, these will just feed out anyhow and it's gonna defeat the purpose of our timer. So right click on that with your crescent hammer and that'll break that connection so that it's completely separate network there. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm not sure why this does this. Uh, there's other ways to do it. Um, uh, if you have a building already built, it's obviously a lot easier, but I'm gonna grab a piece of cobblestone here and I'm gonna put that right here. 
Now I'm going to run my redstone wire, my timer, and the lever. Okay? I'm going to put my timer. You can set this up however you'd like. Set my timer down, my lever there, so this is off. And I got the uh, crafter here set for fast mode. So this will make the things fairly quickly. And as you can see, it's the sandstone is getting a little backed up in there, which is, which is just fine. It's taking it out as fast as it can. Um, it's getting a little backed up in there, but look at all the space we have. So it's not, uh, not an issue. Um, but like I say, you could build a buffer for the sandstone, or for the sandstone if you'd like to. I mean, that's completely up to you as well. Um, so yeah. And then what I got is I got the timer off now. We're back over here. I'm going to run wire and a wire there. And I got to, actually, you know what? Let's break this. Set this redstone, insulate it right there on that. And now we can get in here with our wrench to make this connect like so to this block. That block's going to relay the redstone signal into this cabling. We'll put that back. Just make sure that's still set. Now we should see this flash when we uh, run the timer here. So let's see. Yep, there we go. And it's got signal. All righty. So we don't need nothing on there. Uh, we will need the power on there. We'll run the power here shortly. But right now, we just want to make sure we're having all of this, um, all these configurations set up here. Um, and you could run these, if, when you make this more compact, into this same crafter, because you have recipes left over. But I'm going to use a separate one. I'm going to turn the sun back on. Um, just for the purposes of this tutorial, um, uh, so yeah, I'm just going to run one separate one for the purposes of this. And what do I need? I need a crafter. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a tier one. Um, wow, well, I needed one, not a stack. So we're going to set this here like so. And this is going to be insert. Okay. This wire, I'm going to put a conduit here. That's going to be export with redstone signal. And it's a barrel, so we don't need to filter it. We already know we're going to get niter out of it. And we're going to set that there. Boom. This, we don't really, we don't really need this sign. So we'll disable that. We might run something else there. But I mean, well, you know what? Yeah, we'll do it that way. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Insert, like so. Okay, so now we're getting our items inserted. So now let me run the redstone conduit along here so that all these receive the redstone. And this is going to be inserted. It does not matter if there's a redstone signal to it or not. This is good to go. Now we just need power. So what's going to happen? Snowballs. We'll get on the other side so you can see. Snowballs and redstone. Redstone goes in here, turns into liquid, gets put in the uh, fluid transposer with those snowballs, which makes blizz powder. Okay, blizz powder, redstone, and snowballs will come out and go into the crafter. The um, niter will come out into the crafter with the redstone signal. Okay, and then so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead. I'm not taking a chance of breaking that again, so we'll get a blizz powder. We'll get, let's see, we'll get niter. We'll grab a piece of niter. We'll grab redstone, one piece, like that. And we'll grab a snowball, just like so. Now we'll go into our crafter here and we'll select the first recipe. We'll go niter. We'll go, I mean, I'm sorry, blizz powder, niter, snowballs, redstone. Okay, now this we are going to um, extract it. So leave it at EXT, okay? 
just like that and we will get Cratium dust. So what we want now, and this is where it completely comes into how you want to set this up. I'm just trying to set this up as spaced as I can so you guys can see the situation and what's going on. Um, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and place one piece of wire here, or conduit here, break that connection with my wrench, like so. Now I'm going to get um, just a piece of cry dust to set a filter. That's all I'm doing here with this. Since this is going to be producing the cryethium dust, um, we need to extract it somewhere. And so we're going to, ooh, ooh, don't want to do that. So what we're going to do, get in here like so, extract, always active. Because this one can be always active because um, we're pulling out the finished product. Okay. So with this, we're going to pull out cryethium dust. That's it. That's all we're going to do with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We're going to run it over here. Like I say, you can do this however you'd like. But uh, run this over. Take my wrench. Break this connection. Take my wrench. And I'm just going to set up another fluid transposer. Um, what did I do with my fluid transposer? There it is. I'm just going to take another fluid transposer. Like I say, set this up however you'd like. Um, input. Now I'm going to set another filter up. So this only inputs cryethium dust, okay? And actually, I apologize. We need a magma crucible, not the fluid transposer. Um, that's my mistake, guys. I apologize for that. So magma crucible right here. And this is insert with the filter cryethium. Now we want insert at the top. We want a shift click, shift click. We don't want none of these. We want the export on the right. Now, I'm just going to use a bedrockium drum. I mean, you can do, which if you're going to be making a lot of this, I'd recommend using a bedrockium drum as well. Um, because, yeah, if you're going to be filling up a huge reactor, you're going to need a pile of this stuff. I'm just going to separate it, and I'm just going to run a fluid conduit into it, like so. Um, where are we at? This is just a basic. I hardly ever use these basic conduits uh, for fluid transfers but for this not a big deal not a big deal at all and we're going to fill it up with that the only thing left to do now supply it with some power so that's what we're going to do we're going to run our power units so now we're going to run to this machine this machine this machine and to there like so this, 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 and I'm just going to double check my filter to make sure what I'm inserting, okay? This is just going to be inserting the back side here is simply going to be inserting um, blizz powder, redstone, snowballs in the back one, and then our niter is coming out of this chest, so on this filter, I put a uh, piece of conduit there, but that's fine. Insert right here, and we are going to put the niter. It's going to come in from there. This is going to export. See, I did it again. I got to keep these things off whenever I'm doing this. It's going to export cryethium. So now let's connect our power. And we got power there, power there, right here 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 and we have juice okay so all these are functioning working great that's working good we're getting niter in there or um, blizz powder so let's go ahead and click this on which I'm not sure why we're getting blizz powder it should not be coming out automatically like that with this machine but it is that's not really a big concern though, because you're not going to be producing it that fast. So if it does become an issue, you can set a buffer chest and you'll be just fine. So our crafting should be producing. Oh, I never applied, applied the recipe. So we got niter, we got snowballs, we got redstone, and we got 
dust and apply. There we go. Now it's using it up. And like you can set this down to slow it up just to keep up with your cryethium production, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to slow it down. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to speed uh, raise it to five seconds. That way, as you can see, it was already starting to flood with snowballs. See? Got to be careful with that. There we go. And now we are playing with fire. Look at that. Producing. We're pushing. We got a barrel filled up with cryethium gel filling up right now. This is cooking it down. So there you go, guys. Automated cryethium. Cryethium, cryethium, however you like to pronounce it. <laughs> So basically, it's very simple. Take uh, one bucket, use autonomous activators, create snowballs, break it with shovels in autonomous activators. Um, run them snowballs you produce with redstone to produce your you know, liquid redstone here. Into snowballs with liquid redstone, make your blizz powder. Pull the blizz powder out, put it in the crafting table with redstone and snowballs as well. Hook up to a five second timer. Then you could take your waste product, cobblestone, grind it, turn it into uh, sandstone, grind it again to get your niter, which will then go into here producing your cryethium dust, transfer your dust into a magma crucible and output it into a drum and you have automated liquid cryothium. Um, so yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it's helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments, please drop them. I'll answer any questions I can as quickly as possible. Um, so don't worry about that. I'm not going to leave you guys hanging if you uh, got some concerns. Um, so yeah, please like, again, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one.